Hello my sweet potatoes, it is Michelle and I'm in Japan! I'm currently on the Narita Express with Kyle of course. <laughs> we just landed in Japan literally like an hour and a half ago. We're finally on the Narita Express going to Shinagawa Station. A lot of people take this train to go to Tokyo Station but we're gonna take it for one stop further because it's easier to transfer to the Shinkansen and then we're gonna take the Shinkansen to Kyoto. So our trip really begins in Kyoto. We're gonna spend one day there tomorrow and then we're going to take the Shinkansen back to Tokyo and spend the rest of the like nine days that we have in Tokyo. But yeah, so we flew on Zip Air, which is JAL's or Japan Airlines budget airline. The flight was about 11 and a half hours, I believe. And honestly, it wasn't that bad. You do have to pay for a lot of things like seats, meals, snacks and drinks. There are no screens on the back of your seat so you actually have to use your own device like your phone. They do have free Wi-Fi on board though. That's how you're able to access all of the movies and entertainment that they have on the flight but the Wi-Fi is very spotty. It actually depends on how many other people are using the Wi-Fi too. So after we landed we went straight to immigration. We had to stand in a long line but honestly it went by pretty Pretty quickly about 15 minutes we did fill out a form on the visit japan website to fill out all of our immigration and customs information they give you a qr code and you just have to show that qr code show your passport and then that's pretty much it and all of that took i want to say like 25 minutes in total we were expecting to take hours standing in line but it was a breeze and after that we went to go pick up our jr pass which is the japan rail pass and you need that for for the JR lines but we specifically needed that for the Narita Express which we're on right now and the Shinkansen which we're taking after this so we actually reserved that online as well which I definitely recommend you doing but anyway I think that's all that I wanted to share right now I am very tired my eyes are closed right now and they might just stay closed for the next hour until we get to our stop <laughs> So once we arrived at Shinagawa Station, we grabbed dinner at a bento shop and rode the bullet train to Kyoto Station. This took about two and a half hours and we had basically been traveling for 24 hours at this point so I was past the point of exhaustion. But finally at around 9.30pm, we made it to Kyoto. We walked about 15 minutes from the station to our hotel, checked in, and we were fast asleep by 11pm. And finally, day one in Japan starts now. So we actually didn't sleep much that night. We woke up at around 4am and couldn't get back to sleep because the beds weren't super comfortable and it was really hot in the room. So after lounging around for a few hours, we finally headed out at 7am and took the bus to our first stop in Kyoto, Hokanji Temple. This walk up with the temple gradually closing in was breathtaking. The temple wasn't open yet, actually none of the shops were open at this time, but I've dreamt of coming to this exact spot near Nidenzaka Path and capturing a shot of the temple from here for years. And even though it was a little crowded with other people, it was still such a stunning sight. We waited for the Starbucks nearby to open at 8am and this one's special because it's built in a traditional Japanese home with tatami floors. The interior blends traditional and modern design so beautifully. They also sell all the usual food and drinks that you'll find at any other Starbucks in Japan. I got a matcha frappuccino and Kyle got a latte. Then after our caffeine boost, we took the train and headed south to Fushimi Inari Taisha. There are over 10,000 tori or gates here at the Shinto shrine. I visited here over 10 years ago but it was really hot and humid since it was in summer so it was so nice to be back during a cooler time of the year so I could really enjoy the experience. It was quite crowded but after the first pit stop it clears up a lot so if you're trying to get photos keep going after the first pit stop. We hiked for about 45 minutes in total, then afterwards we made our way back up north to grab lunch. We stopped by Moss Burger which is a fast food burger restaurant. I got the original Moss Burger and Kyle got the Toro Tama Cheese Teriyaki Burger which has a soft boiled egg inside. We also got the set so it came with fries and a drink. This was my first time at Moss Burger and it was so good especially for being a fast food restaurant. It totally beats all the fast food burger spots in the US.
After lunch, we walked over to watch Gear. It's a non-verbal theater experience that stimulates your five senses while telling a story. You can't record or take photos during the performance, but the story is set in the future where Roboroids meet a doll. The show makes you feel so many emotions like laughter, sadness, and surprise. There's some audience interaction as well, and the actors ended up choosing me to participate in one of their acts. It was really simple though, but it was so much fun. I went in with no expectations and came out in complete awe. I highly recommend it if you're looking for something different to do in Kyoto. After gear, we made our way to Arashiyama Bamboo Forest. I specifically wanted to check out the Rilakkuma Cafe nearby because I'm obsessed with that lazy bear and I have been for a decade now and when I saw that there was a cafe dedicated to it, I had to go. And it was so adorable. They have a restaurant upstairs as well with Rilakkuma shaped food, but we just stayed downstairs and got a little snack. I got these mini Rilakkuma shaped bread bites. And then we looked around the shop. I ended up getting this embroidered handkerchief since Japan doesn't have paper towels or hand dryers in bathrooms, so everyone just uses their own handkerchief. There was seriously so much cute Rilakkuma merchandise like accessories, stationery, snacks, and of course plushies. It's truly Rilakkuma heaven, and if I could just make everything in my life Rilakkuma themed, I would be so happy. <laughs> Down the road, they also have a Miffy cafe, and I also love Miffy. They have a little bakery where they sell Miffy themed baked goods, and there's also a shop with all the Miffy merchandise you could dream of. It was, again, so adorable. Then we were gonna go through the bamboo forest, but it started pouring rain. So we just headed back to our hotel to grab our bags and went to Kyoto Station to take the Shinkansen back to Tokyo. This was another two and a half hour journey, but I had a bunch of food and snacks from 7-Eleven to keep me occupied. This donburi with assorted meats was so good. It had chicken, beef, pork, and vegetables in a savory sauce with rice underneath. I really didn't expect it to be that good, but I think it was because I was also really hungry after such a long day. The employee heated it up for me too when I checked out so I could enjoy it nice and warm and then I got a bunch of snacks too. This Kororo grape jelly gummy candy was really good. The texture is so interesting and squishy. And these puree gummies are my favorite. They come in lots of different fruit flavors and they're a little bit sour and I love sour snacks but honestly these weren't that great. There were apple, peach, and grape flavors but these all had a weird aftertaste and I didn't like that they were hollow in the middle. Usually these are a full gummy piece but eh. These were just okay. And finally, we arrived back in Tokyo at around 9 p.m., walked to our hotel, stopped at a family mart to grab breakfast on the way, and checked in at 9.15. We're staying at Tokyo State Ginza, and the room is indeed small, but it's in a great location, has a nice view, and has a washer and dryer in the room, which we will definitely be using since it has been so much hotter than we expected on this trip. So that is all for today's vlog, getting to Japan and exploring Kyoto. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow as we begin all of our adventures in Tokyo.